Hey guys, today we're gonna look at bubble sort. So we're gonna implement it in this compiler and we're gonna look at the whiteboard and understand a little bit how it works, right? But in this video, we're mostly gonna focus on how to implement bubble sort or not. So it's one of the most used algorithms out there, like in classes, it's not the most efficient. It incurs big O of n squared time complexity in the worst case. So yeah, it's, it's not the most efficient sorting algorithm. There are better ones out there, but we, we definitely need to learn to implement it and whatnot. So we're gonna see that in this video. Now, before we dive into the code, let's go uh, into the into the whiteboard. Now, let's see how it works. Um, so we're gonna have two loops, right? So the inner loop is gonna start from the first index, or just the zeroth index, and we have this dummy array, like five, four, three, two, one, just just to make it simple. Now what so what the inner loop is going to do is it's going to compare every single element to its second element or to the element that is next to it and it's going to see if that element is greater than the second element or the next element or not in this case we're we're sorting it in ascending order right so that's why we're going to check the the next element now if 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 let's say if the ith element is actually greater than the i plus one element, the next element is gonna swap itself with the i plus one element because it's not in order, right? Now let's see how it works. So the inner loop is gonna start from five. And it's gonna check if four, which is the next element to five, i plus one, is it greater than four or not. The five is greater than four, so it shouldn't be greater than four because it should be after it in ascending order, right? So that it's gonna swap itself. They're gonna swap themselves, whatever. So it's gonna become four and five. So they're gonna remain the same and the so the pointer will keep on increasing and incrementing and it's gonna go to five. As it's gonna check is five greater than three or not? right if it is then it's gonna swap with three. so it's gonna become four three five sorry for the bad handwriting and one so it's gonna become that and then it's gonna go to five and it's gonna swap with two like because two is lesser than five right five is greater than two now it's gonna now five is gonna come here and so now five is gonna compare with one and one is definitely lesser than five, so it's gonna like just swap itself. So now you can see that five is actually in its correct position. It's in the last position, but the other elements are actually not like yet sorted, right? It might be sorted if you're lucky, but it's not sorted. So at the end, we're gonna have something like after one iteration of the loop, we're gonna have something like this: four, three, two, one, five. So we need to run this loop n amount of times in order to like properly sort it. So we'll need another loop outside of our in, inner loop, right? So make to make sure that each of the elements are turned and they're sorted and they're like shifted to the right place. So again, we're, we're gonna make sure that we we'll run the loop n amount of times, but we can optimize it later so we don't have to do it uh, more times than it's required and we don't wanna waste time, right? So, Let's so the the next loop will run from four is gonna check is four greater than three it is then three is gonna swap with four, you know, and so on and so forth. So now four is gonna go to its like correct position, and then the other elements will sort it themselves as well. And another thing to keep in mind is we're only gonna run the loop to n minus one the inner loop at least, because because like it's it's pretty obvious. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna like go out of bound. If we do like till the last element, we'll go out of bound because we're checking the next element, and one doesn't have any next element, right? The last element doesn't have any next element, so we'll. So it's it's a pretty basic thing. Just thought about pointing that out. Now let's come back to our compiler and let's see how we can code it up. It's pretty simple code. Uh, before that, let's have an array, and uh, let's five, four, three, two, one. To keep it simple again. And let's code up our function. Uh, I'm gonna import something. Java. I'm gonna import it because uh, I need to use a function to like print the array. Um. Anyway, so let's code up the function bubble sort. It's gonna be void. It's not gonna return anything. It's just gonna let's call it bubble sort, and it's gonna take an argument of array. 
an integer array. So, yeah, and we're gonna have two for loops. We're gonna look at, like, we're gonna look for another way too, you know? So, which is more optimized, we're gonna have a while loop and we're gonna have a for loop inside of it. So, we're just gonna make sure, like, if our array is sorted, then it's not gonna unnecessarily loop through the items again and again. Because, because in this case, we're gonna loop through the items n amount, n amount of times. Doesn't matter if it's sorted or not. So, we're gonna see. Array dot length plus plus. Then we're gonna have an inner loop, right? So four and j equals zero and j is less than array dot length minus one as we discussed why. And we'll, we're gonna compare like uh, if array dot j is greater than array dot j plus one. So we're just gonna swap them. So in temp equals array dot j. Array dot j equals array dot j plus one. So this is uh, basic swapping. If you guys have any trouble with it, like you can Google it up how to swap items and whatnot. So yeah, here we here we have it now. So now if we run this uh, function, we should have our array sorted. So bubble sort. We're gonna call the function. We're gonna pass on the array, and we're gonna just print print the array now. And I'm going to just use this Java feature. That's why I imported it. Array. And if we run it, uh, okay, so we're going to add this. And we have it sorted, right? So this is one way to use bubble sort. Um, but there is another way to do it. It's a little bit more efficient because well, not in every case, but uh, it, it will kind of save you from some amount of loops if the arrays are already sorted, you know. It's not going to loop through an, an amount of times. It's going to break it before that. So, let's see how we can code that up. So, we can see in this case that we're going to loop through the array in the outer loop. We're going to loop through the array n amount of times. N equals the array items, like number of items in the array, right? Doesn't matter what happens, we're gonna do that. But in this case, in the second case, we're gonna have a while loop that's gonna check for a condition. So let's have a boolean. Boolean is sorted equals, it's gonna be initially false, right? So we're gonna have a while loop outside of it. So while it is not sorted, we're gonna implement the holy stuff, right? So inside, when we enter this loop, we're gonna make it true. We're gonna see why. Now we're gonna have the same for loop inside of it. So for int i equals zero, right up to length minus one, plus plus. And uh, it's gonna have the same, you know, a dot i is less, I mean, greater than array dot i plus one. We're gonna, swap those items, right? And temp equals array dot i. Again, basic swapping, array dot i equals hmm, array dot i plus one. And then we're gonna put the temp, which is the array dot i you know, value, and, and this array dot i plus one. And then we're gonna do something. We're gonna make it sorted as false, sorry. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna work the same way if we run this again. This is gonna work. So as you can say, like as you can tell, it's the same. And uh, let's let's change the items a bit. Let's add negative elements to it too, and some duplicates element. And let's see if it works. And it does work. Now, what we did in this uh, second case, right? So. If we have a while loop, and first of all, we're going to declare a boolean variable. It's going to set it to false at first, and then when we enter this loop, it's going to set it to true. So, and then we're going to have the same for loop inside of it and whatnot. And uh, when while we, you know, kind of satisfy this condition that array to i is greater than array plus i, one plus i. Uh, so while we satisfy that condition, we know that there might be sorting left to be done. So we're gonna just set it to false so it loops through the item once again. And once, like, 
it iterates through the whole array, like the inner loop iterates through the whole array, and none of the time this condition checks out. So it's gonna remain true because we have declared it true inside of it, right? So it's gonna break out of this loop and it's gonna return us the sorted array. So with that, we kind of save some amount of time if the array, you know, gets sorted after a few iterations. So yeah, that's, that's how we do bubble sort in two ways. Uh, if you like this video, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, and if you have any doubts, also comment down below. And yeah, share it with your friends and have a good day. Thank you.